Hello guys. So let's keep going with this series of problems for uh, equivalent systems. Now this is in 3D. I have a problem before that I solved and it's similar to this one but the problem was giving you the forces and they were asking you for the location of the resultant force. Now it's a little bit different because now we have some of the forces, we don't know the magnitude of these two but, and we don't know the magnitude of the resultant but we know the location of the resultant. So in the other problem I use position vectors but I'm, now I'm going to show you something that works a little bit easier once you get used to it and um, instead of just doing in vector wise R cross F what we are going to do is checking the rotation with respect to a specific axis so the first point is the same the first situation is calculating the magnitude of the resultant force and of course it's going to be acting downward like that in, in the z direction so it's going to be F1 plus F2 F1 plus F2 plus 12 plus 6 which is the same thing as saying F1 plus F2 plus 18 that's the magnitude of the resultant force. Now, remember the principle. The location of the resultant force is given, it says 12 meters somewhere here in the x direction, 12, and 10 meters in the y direction, meaning somewhere here. So the resultant force will be acting somewhere there, resultant force. Now the principle is that if I study rotation in the x direction only caused by the forces, that's what we are going to do, summation of moments of the forces with respect to the x direction. Let's start with this force. This force is on top of the axis, hence it's not going to produce any rotation. Now this other force, F2, if I have my axis like that and I apply the force in this direction here, the axis is going to create the moment that is going to cause this type of rotation going negative in the other direction. So the axis will be spinning in this way. And if it's spinning in, spinning in this way, it's entering into the axis, meaning that it's going to be a negative value. So it's going to be F2 times the distance from here to here. Um, that distance from here to here is how much? In the x axis, 20. 8 plus 12, 20. So it's going to be 20, and it's going to be negative for the reason I explained. Now you have this force of 12, and the distance is provided here, 8. Once again, is negative also, negative 12 times 8. And now you have this force of 6 here, once again, is negative, acting in that way, so it's going to be 20 times 6. And this is going to be the summation of the forces in that direction. The moment, the moment that the resultant force produced in the x direction has to be equal to this, of course. I put force here. Remember, this is moment. The moment of the force, the moment that the resultant force produced in the x direction it will be by the resultant force and it will be the resultant force multiplied by in this direction multiplied by this distance which is 12 but remember we already know the yeah by by 12 remember we already know no this is not 12 this is 12 so the distance is going to be this distance 10. It's too early in the morning, guys. 10. So the resultant force multiplied by 10, and it's going to be negative, but the resultant force is this. So I can say that this is equal to negative F1 plus F2 plus 18 multiplied by 10. Now, the moment with respect to the x axis has to be, e the resultant force has to be equal to the moment of all the forces in the x-axis. So I can make these two equations the same. And I get negative 20 F2, and this is 96, and this is 120. Has to be equal to this, negative 10 F1 minus 10 F2 
2 minus 180. I pass this F2 to this side, so negative 20 plus 10 is going to be negative 10 F2. I pass this to the other side, so plus 10 F1. If I add this, it's going to be 216 negative. When I pass it to the other side, it's going to be positive 216 minus 180, so it's going to be 36. Thirty-six. Correct. And we have one equation that we obtain with the x-axis. Now we do the same thing with the y-axis. Now I'm going to study everything that rotates in the y-axis. This force, summation of moments of the force in the y-axis. This force, F2, is placed on top of the axis, so it's not producing any moment this force of 12 can produce a rotation about the x-axis and it will be something like this positive direction the force is 12 the force is 12 this force and the distance that makes this force rotate with respect to the y-axis is this 6 so it's going to be 12 times 6 the force F1 is here and once again this force will produce a rotation positive rotation with respect to the y-axis like this when you multiply F1 and this distance and the total distance from here to here is 22 and the force of 6 when I multiply that by this distance is going to be 6, 10, 26, 26 and it's going to be also positive. This is the summation of all the forces, the moment of all the forces with respect to the y-axis. Now I can do this, the moment of the resultant force with respect to the y-axis. The value of the resultant force is this. And the distance that causes the rotation with respect to the y-axis is this one. How much is that distance? 12. And of course it's going to be positive as well. Now these two has to be the same and if I put them together then you get this is 72. Let me use the calculator. Calculator. 12 times 6 plus 6 times 26. 228. So you're going to have 22 F1 plus 228 has to be equal to 12 F1 plus 12 F2 plus 12 times 18. 12 times 18, I think is 216, but just... Yeah, 216. And then we can solve. Pass this 12 to this side, and then you get 10 F1. Pass this to the other side, you get negative 12 F2. And then pass this to the other side, and then you get negative 12. And then you get a second equation. Now what you have is a system of two equations with two unknowns. Let me put it here apart. Negative 10 F2 plus 10 F1 equals 36. And the other one is going to be 10 F1 minus 12 F2 equals negative 12. The easiest way of solving this problem, you see this coefficient is the same. So basically I can multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. And if I multiply that by negative 1, then this is going to become negative, this is going to become positive, and this is going to become positive. And then you add them up. When you add them up, these and these are going to cancel out. So you got negative 10F2 plus 12F2. That means that it's going to be 2F2. This is positive and positive equals 48. So F2 is going to be 48 divided by 2, 24 kilonewtons. 
And how do you solve for F1? Well, you just plug this into any equation, whatever looks easier to you. You can plug this into any of the equations. I'm going to plug it into the first equation just because. So negative 10 times F2. I'm, I'm using this equation here. And F2, remember, is that value. Negative 10 times F2 plus 10 F1 equals 36. This is 240. Negative, when I pass it to the other side, it's going to be positive. So 10 F1 equals 36 plus 240, 276. And F1 is going to be 27.6 kilonewton. There you go. That's another problem. It's the same principle, the same way. We do it similarly. Summation of all the rotations as caused by the force has to be the same as the summation of the rotations or the moments caused by the resultant force. I hope that you like it. Thank you for watching and keep watching and keep learning guys. See you later.